Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program, episode 10 of SSTO Space Program. Today we are finally launching two awesome space freighters you guys voted for in the last video. The freighters that got most votes are Karen and Flame Leviathan and we will be launching those two today. We will put both our vessels in orbit using two completely different methods, just to add a little bit of variation to the flow of our mission. I would like to add that I uh, will also use the bag eventually, that was a very popular vessel uh, in the vote. But uh, it is actually so small that we can just launch it anytime we want without any serious problems, so I decided that this is going to happen later in the series as we progress. So today we are focusing on Karen and Flame Leviathan because those two are not only very large, they are also very very heavy. Those of you who've watched my single launch space station video know that we could have just easily brute forced both of the vessels into orbit, but I thought it would be more interesting to find another more cost effective method of doing it. So I ran the numbers for the Karen and I realized that uh, when it's not carrying any payload it's almost a rocket SSTO, provided we add a bunch of mammoth engines to it. So this is precisely what I did. I added a separate engine compartment of 13 mammoth engines to the bottom of the vessel that we will use to put it in orbit, where uh, it will detach and um, the engines will eventually land back at the KSC. So we're launching the freighter in only one launch, but we will end up with empty fuel tanks and our freighter will require some refueling afterwards. I've decided to start with hub rings already deployed as well, because deploying them after launch requires some material kits and electric charge, and I wasn't exactly sure how to go about that, so I decided to circumvent the problem and launch them already in their deployed position. So, as you can see, we are finishing our circularization burn here, and with that we've placed our freighter in a 120 km orbit around Kerbin. Now, with our freighter safely in orbit, it's time to detach the engine compartment, deorbit it and land it back at the KSC. I added a couple of extra tanks to it, so we'll have enough fuel to deorbit it, but not to do a powered landing, as I usually do. Also, this vessel wasn't tested before and I wasn't sure if the re-entry is going to be successful. And it turned out we had a major problem that almost led to a catastrophe. But eventually it all worked out and you'll see what happened. And uh, I might add, it's not the only almost a catastrophe thing that happened during the course of this whole mission. So initially everything was going alright, the vessel was responding very well, we had a lot of reaction wheels so we could control it despite the lack of any control surfaces in the atmosphere, but then I realized that the probe core that was controlling it was mounted in such a way that it was actually peeking over a heat shield and that, <laughs> well that posed a major problem because I realized that it's going to be destroyed very rapidly. So I decided to activate the parachutes while we were still on our suborbital trajectory before we've lost control over the probe. And that's exactly what happened. Once the plasma blackout kicked in and we've lost control over the vessel, the probe core exploded shortly after. And the only thing that saved me at this point was the newly introduced feature in KSP, which is deploying the parachutes when safe. And they've actually deployed when safe and uh, we've landed at the KSC without any major problem, but uh, otherwise I uh, I would have to restart everything and uh, or, you know, sacrifice the fuel tanks with mammoth engines, but uh, provided that you guys had a pretty expensive taste and um, those two freighters that we've launched ruined our budget, I uh, I don't think that we can afford any, any kind of like a major space disaster right now. Karen ended up in orbit without any fuel left as you know and we'll have to refuel it, but we'll do that later. It also has a very extensive life support system that can support a single pilot for years if needed. Since pilots are tougher than your average Kerbal, the maximum hub time for them is indefinite and in terms of supplies, our current level will sustain a pilot for over 40 years and that's without taking into account all the greenhouses we have on board. With that said, we are leaving the current for now and we are moving to the second part of our operation, which is launching the Flame Leviathan. We will launch this massive freighter in three launches using our new high payload cargo SSTO that you might have seen already. It was built specifically for this purpose and the reason why I decided to split the freighter in three pieces was because I wanted to put the ship in orbit fully fueled. 
As you may know already, the SSTO that we are using today has a maximum payload capacity of 440 tons to low carbon orbit and is capable of delivering even very large payloads. The first part of the Flame Leviathan, which is mainly the bridge, some crew cabins, utilities and a couple of fuel tanks, was rather light and its total mass was just over 200 tons. The drawback, however, was that it was still too large to fit into Mark III fairing. But our new SSTO OCOD2 was designed with such issues in mind and not only has enough engine power to overcome any drag problems you might experience due to the unusual shape of your payload obviously, it also has the option to adapt its center of mass by moving fuel around the ship. It basically starts with many empty fuel tanks and your required fuel can be redistributed to ensure correct center of mass placement. Flying this massive SSTO is actually pretty easy, despite of how it looks, and uh, it was in fact quite surprising for me. With its high, um, very high thrust to weight ratio and relatively aerodynamic shape, the vessel not only climbs easily, but also accelerates very fast. So, flying it into orbit comes down to pitching up to 10 degrees and uh, grabbing a cup of coffee. I was rather happy that it was the case, as we'll need to fly this ship another 3 times before we're done for today. At 15 to 16 km altitude, it is recommended to level your flight slightly to gain some velocity, and once it's done, engage close cycle and vector engine at the back, and continue upwards to orbit. The single vector engine we have installed at the back provides extra push to help us out of the atmosphere a bit quicker and is also very useful for any orbital maneuvers you might want to do because it has higher ISP than rapiers and also a large gimbal. We are going to place the first part of our freighter in a 80km circular orbit around Kerbin to make future encounters a bit easier but also because our SSTO isn't rated for higher orbits. With the slighter payload it would not be a problem, but our next launches are going to be significantly heavier. At the moment we have finally circularized and we are ready to detach the front part of our freighter and leave it in orbit. As you see, we have a probe core installed on the vessel and uh, lots of RCS thrusters, so even without engines we will be able to perform some minor orbital corrections if needed. Flame Leviathan's main source of power is a nuclear reactor from USI Modpack, so we don't need to worry about running out of power in the following couple of decades. With the payload safely in orbit, it's time to deorbit our OCOD2 SSTO for the very first time. I was a bit reckless, or um, should I say, trusted my experience more than I should and haven't actually tested this vessel beforehand. Luckily for us, our first re-entry went very well and the ship is in fact very stable and very responsive. The excess fuel we have also means that we don't need to glide our way back to KSC. In fact, doing so with such a large ship would be relatively hard. Well, it flies okay, but it's not a fighter jet, so don't expect the same sort of maneuverability from it if you decide to fly this monster yourself. Actually, I would be pretty interested in seeing what kind of crazy creations you guys could put in orbit with it. A 440 ton payload would make a sizable space station already. In any case, our first re-entry went surprisingly well and we had a textbook landing on the runway. As I said, this is important as those two freighters that you guys have chosen ate almost 80% of our total budget, so recovering as much as we can is imperative. Our next launch was the engine compartment for the Flame Leviathan and this part was not only heavier, weighing a bit over 300 tons, but it also fit under the fairing, substantially reducing the overall drag. The fairing you see right now is actually the maximum size that is allowed in stock game in terms of diameter. Also, since we wanted to send this part with all its fuel tank full, I needed to pump the fuel back in the SSTO. This created some problems later, as you will see. But for now, we had no problem taking off and gaining neither height nor velocity. Actually, despite heavier payload, it was even easier than before, thanks to the benefits of shielding our payload under the fairing. Upon reaching a relatively similar orbit to the one we left the frontal part of our freighter in, the fairing was deployed and our payload detached. The reason why I used an ugly confetti style fairing is because I was afraid that parts of it might get stuck in between the payload and our SSTR. This usually leads to a very rapid and flashy unplanned disassembly and since we had Valentina as pilot, an extra care was taken to ensure nothing bad happens. We simply cannot afford to lose the only responsible Kerbal pilot we have. 
The engine cell was left in orbit with its tanks mainly full of liquid fuel and a little bit of oxidizer for our RCS thrusters and we were ready to deorbit our launch vehicle for the second time. This time however it didn't go as smoothly because I have completely forgotten that the fuel we had left was all in the aft of our vessel and it became dangerously unstable during re-entry. As the ship started spinning uncontrollably I locked the camera and managed to pump enough fuel to the front and regained control over the vessel. Once this was done flying back to KC was again not a big deal and we were ready to launch the third and final part of the flame leviathan into orbit. This launch was pretty much the same as the previous one, so I guess we don't need to explain in detail how it was done. The payload is exactly the same, the launch vehicle is also the same and our pilot is slightly more experienced, so we managed to get to orbit without any surprises. I didn't plan the launches to ensure that we have an encounter with any of the pieces already in orbit, mainly because that would most certainly require night launches and you guys would not be able to see anything. And also because initially I had no idea how long it takes to reach orbit with this vessel. As I said, it wasn't tested before at all. In any case, all three pieces were safely delivered into orbit and full of fuel. So before moving on to docking, it was time to deorbit our launch vehicle for the third time. We have only one launch left, but that will be done after we finish assembling the flying Leviathan. This time I remembered to pump the fuel to the front and re-entry went without any surprises whatsoever. The ship was stable and responsive and even though I overshot the KC a little bit we still had enough fuel to make it back and land on the runway. It was a relatively rough but nevertheless successful landing. Nothing broke nor exploded so it's a success in Kerbal World. I think that right now it's a good moment to sum up our current situation. We have the current freighter in a roughly circular 125 km orbit with Jeb on board but without any fuel left and three pieces of the flame Leviathan scattered on a 80 km circular orbit but full of fuel. We are going to connect those together using construction ports, a very handy part that comes with the USI construction mod. We already used those ports in our Munar construction base as you remember and those ports act as a regular docking ports that once connected allow forming a permanent connection between docked parts, removing both docking ports in the process obviously. I also have installed some probe cores in the Flyam Leviathan engines to simplify the docking process and we are now ready to set the encounters with the main part. Since I believe that uh, all of you are experts now in orbital encounters, I won't go into much detail how it was done, but it's safe to say that we needed to place our engines in a slightly eccentric orbit that would ensure an encounter with the main part of the vessel. Since both the main part, which is for some reason I have an urge to call a bridge, and the engines were equipped with powerful thrusters, it wasn't very difficult and went surprisingly fast. I was a little anxious and expected some trouble docking two 300 tons vessel together using one docking port only, but my worries have proven to be unfounded. With the first engine docked, I moved to setting an encounter with the second one and this also went really well. This time I was expecting the asymmetrical vessel to be much less controllable, but again it was not the case. I guess I'm worrying too much nowadays. Orbital encounters are yet another situation where a Kerbal alarm clock shines. You can set an alarm for the closest approach, go back to KC or to another vessel and carry on with your business or simply enjoy the faster time warp that you didn't have access to in orbit. Once the second engine section was docked the main part of the vessel, I compressed the construction ports and formed a permanent connection between the three parts. We still have 95% of the fuel left in our ship and with that the flame Leviathan became officially operational and ready for service. It will see action very soon. But before that happens there is still one thing left to do and that is refueling the current. Since we don't have an orbital tanker for the job I decided to build one that would carry an equivalent of 5 size 3 tanks into orbit. The drone tanker weighs exactly 438 tons and will be launched as payload using our new SSTO launch vehicle. It is also designed to fit inside the fairing to reduce drag. Once in orbit it will encounter the Karen or whatever it is that we need to refuel, dock to it, transfer most of its fuel and land back at the KC, very much like the retired space shuttle would do. That was my plan at least. And I must say that this plan worked mostly as intended and since this was yet another vessel that I haven't tested before I was a little bit worried that something might happen. 
Nevertheless, we reached orbit easily and the tanker detached from the SSTO. It has built-in solar panels and quite a lot of batteries, a number of powerful reaction meals for maximum control and two poodle engines for relative balance between thrust and efficiency. As far as orbital maneuvering goes, it's a relatively well-rounded vessel. After landing the launch vehicle back at the KC, luckily, without much trouble, we recovered the vessel at its full price. Uh, we're broke now, mind you, so it's important. The tanker and Karen encounter was set. At this point, I fully realized how massive this freighter is. Even though our tanker is rather large, it is still easily dwarfed by the sheer size of the Karen, and we will need six more launches like this one to fully fuel it. We definitely need to make a refueling station around Kerbin and the Mun if our budding freight company is going to have any chances of success. Here you have a couple of beauty shots of our tanker docking to the freighter. It was actually quite hard to do since both vessels are significantly heavier than Flame Leviathan parts were. Anyway, I docked the tanker eventually and after pumping the fuel to the freighter, the vessel was undocked and was ready to be deorbited. I left a little bit of fuel in the tanker, so it had a bit over 250 meters per second delta V left. So just to deorbit and run the Garcia system. Once the deorbit burn was complete and our trajectory established, we were ready for re-entry. And uh, as you probably have guessed, our vessel wasn't exactly very stable in the upper parts of the atmosphere because of the large body lift contribution. To counter that, I needed to point pretty much prograde and because of that our vessel exploded. Well not entirely, just the front docking port blew up, but since it was the root part of our tanker it looked quite dangerous initially. After this exciting event the rest of the flight was relatively easy. The ship is not very maneuverable and I needed to tweak the control surfaces on the fly, but we managed to land at the KC and taxi to the runway easily. With this, I would like to thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed and if you did, please consider giving this video a like. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm Mark Frim and I'll see you next time. Cheers!